Hi there, it's Natasha and thank you so much for joining me today. Well, I have these leftovers sitting around my table from several projects that I've been working on. Now to me, leftovers are different than scraps because scraps are kind of things that I might have cut into or this kind of odds and ends. But leftovers for me are kind of things that are still perfectly good and they're just whole, complete pieces, often extra die cuts and things that I probably just haven't put away in their right places. So this one here is the elliptical ovals and then the circular ones are called rings around the circle. These are both from Spellbinders and usually I store them in the back here. I turn them over and I put them in the back so that when I come to do some die cutting and I see what's uh, there or it's already there then I don't need to die cut and I just haven't put them back. This is the layering robin stamp bundle uh, from Hero Arts and I had done a couple of these as well as the stumps and then these flowers are I think this is called flower picking friends from Simon Hurley my absolute favorite lily of all time uh, this flower is an easy one to use in so many different ways so these were sitting on my desk and I was like okay let's have a use up the leftovers day Including that, I have these masking magic circles here, which I have die cut out, and I think I have definitely used the um, Hero Arts Infinity dies, the circles for this one. So this video for me was like, it's time to use my leftovers, and I might do a little bit of kind of make my own DIY kind of thing here, uh, with some stencils that I had out for another project as well. It felt like it was kind of a theme, so I want you to grab those things on your table that are leftovers, and see what you can create. Now actually, these two stencils were sitting on top of each other on my desk, and I was like hey, layering these up would be fun. I might not have thought to do that, but they were literally sitting on top of each other, and I thought, that could be fun. The group of stencils that I had out were all kind of a circular-ish pattern, so I just decided to go with a few of those. Then as for the actual stenciling, I decided that instead of going with plain old ink, I would also try something that I feel like I haven't done in a little while, and it's a really fun technique, and it's kind of... Um, I'm going to first of all show you the kind of product that I use and that I was inspired by loosely uh, and then I will make our own. So first of all I'm going to start off here with just some plain inks and this is kind of the first stage of a two-step stencil. I was going to do the two layers on this one. I have a little bit of low-tech tape. This is the mint tape from scrapbook.com. Then I got out my finger dobbers, which are my Distress Ink, uh, Distress Oxide Ink finger dobbers. And I am just going to use the ink that is left on these because this is efficient with my time today. Um, so I chose a yellow. I'm pretty sure this is the mustard seed color. Um, and I'm just not too worried about getting perfect coverage at all. Um, obviously with this technique, you can use any stencils at all. Doesn't matter. And then this product here is the Nouveau Glimmer Paste. This is in the color Moonstone. Now, as of when this video is going live, uh, this is in January 2022, then this is still available, and I've just looked it up. There's plenty in stock. Uh, and I do like this one because it's kind of whitish, and it has a really subtle um, but glimmery, glittery kind of look to it. It's more of a warm one than a cool colors kind of one. Uh, so yeah, I really like this, and it is very versatile. So this is the only kind of uh, glimmer paste like this one that I have, uh, but I'm going to show you some alternatives to this as well. So I am popping the star stencil over top. So I took off the Sunray stencil and popped the star one on top. And then I just tacked it down with the exact same uh, mint tape that was on there. Now the Starburst stencil had the center all covered up. Uh, so I didn't have to worry about masking that off, but for the stars, they actually got in that piece in the middle. So I'm just going to take my little palette knife and before these dry, I'm going to gently scrape them off. I just wasn't sure at this point if I wanted the star pattern to be in there. I could have cut a mask, but it just felt like an extra step at this point. Now this is it when it's wet and it's going to look much different when it dries, but gorgeous nonetheless. Now here I'm going to pop a mask down onto my piece of cardstock. At the moment, this is four and a quarter by five and a half inches. And I decided while I was at it that I could definitely just do both of these. So I just popped them down. I'm going to eyeball where to put them. One is slightly higher and one is more so in the middle. And then I have a couple of these stencils that I think I will use. 
Now, one, these are both texture paste. However, the main difference, the one on the left is transparent and the one on the right is opaque matte. These are both matte, uh, but one is going to dry pretty much clear and the other one is going to dry opaque, so white in this case. But just to kind of create my own and do something a little bit different, I'm going to add in some re-inkers. So this is the Clear Skies Reinker from Simon Hurley, and this is just a gorgeous blue color. But then when I was halfway through this, and as I said, I was kind of loosely inspired by the Nouveau Glimmer paste, I thought, why not add in a little bit of sparkle and just see how it ends up. So this is from Alina Crafts. You could also use, I have the Nouveau White Glitter here, but I decided to go with the blue one just to be and kind of see what happened and see uh, what the result was. So I mix this in with a little palette knife and then I'm going to line up my stencil on my piece of paper and just gently spread this all through. This has really big open spaces. So if you are feeling confident, then you don't have to tack this down at all. But just because I didn't want to muck this up, I put my piece of paper with two pieces of mint low-tech tape facing upwards. And that way they hold my stencil in place. Not the top and the bottom perfectly, but it means that it's not going to shift at least. Um, and then I just gently spread this all through, remembering that there is a mask in the middle of this. So that is why I am leaving the center completely free and I don't need to cover that bit up. That would just be a waste on top of there. Uh, but I do want to make sure this is relatively smooth so I kind of put all of the paste on and then you'll see I gently kind of scrape over top to get a nice even layer um, once I have got all of the paste kind of in the cracks and crevices I go over it to create the even smooth layer on top. There is a little bit left over and I usually just pop this over to the side because in a minute I am actually going to do a project at the end which I am going to use up some of these bits and pieces the leftover uh, paste from doing these stencils. So I take off the mint tape while this is still wet because I don't want anything to dry uh, with this paste. It will dry kind of pretty hard and so I don't want um, to kind of struggle to get this off once everything is dry. So I'm going to take a pair of little reverse tweezers and pull that off. And I really like this, but when you look up close, that sparkle is already coming through. So good color choice so far. That was the opaque one. Now this is the transparent matte texture paste. There are so many texture pastes, modeling pastes, embossing pastes. And in general, I'm sure they have tiny differences, but they are very, very similar. So um, I go with these ones and I'm perfectly happy with these. I'm going to do almost the same thing just for a little bit of comparison. I am adding in some re-inker and the exact same glitter that I did before. Now this Starburst one here, I think this is a Honeybee Stamps stencil. Um, I'm pretty sure this one is still available. So I have popped this one down on my piece of paper. I'm going to mix up the transparent matte embossing paste. Now matte just means that it's going to dry without a shine, without any uh, sheen to it. Whereas the glossy one is obviously going to dry glossy if that's the look that you prefer. I generally tend to lean towards the matte look. Um, and I know I can make it glossy if I wanted to. I could use like embossing powder, clear embossing powder over top if I wanted to make it glossy. So I prefer to use the matte one because it's more versatile to me and I don't want to have to um, store all of the different options that are available. Usually there's some sort of DIY or something I can add to what I already have that will give me a really similar um, final product. Now same thing here, I'm going to lift up that mask off the middle and this is a fun part because it does kind of reveal those nice clean edges. And then this one here, again, even though this is still wet, you can see some of that gorgeous shine coming through from the glitter when I hold it up nice and close so you can see. Um, as I said, I take off all those little pieces of mint tape and things because anything that dries on here is going to be a little bit trickier to get off. Now, this is where I was thinking, I had this leftover sitting on my desk and I had those leftover pastes that I had just made for my previous ones, but I did decide to make up a little bit more, which maybe defeats the purpose, but I was happy here. And it just shows that you can go ahead and use anything. So this is just a simple die cut from the Rings Around the Circle Spellbinders cutting dies. Um, yeah, and I thought I would see that I could use this as a perfectly good mask if you didn't have stencils, uh, but you had some die cuts lying around, so you are able to use those. So I'm going to make up a couple more of these. I wanted one to be slightly lighter and one to be slightly darker. 
and you could again I was going to use up the extra paste so I wanted to stay in the kind of blues family um, but you could go any colors at all any reinkers that you have if you don't have reinkers then you are able to kind of smush your ink pad down on a non-stick surface um, and then put the embossing paste on top and you can mush it in that way get ink out that way uh, lots of different ways that you are able to color these pastes now this one here I'm just going to kind of do a little bit of multicolor so I just um, take different little pieces around of it and that way I can kind of mix them in and get them to blend a little bit as well. I did put a little bit of the Tombow removable adhesive on the back of my die cut just so I knew that it wouldn't shift and would stay in place. Um, and then once I had done the outside here, I'm not sure why I didn't do it kind of all in one swoop, but I was running out of paste a little bit. So I think I was just trying to get the outside done here. Once I think I've got everything really perfectly blended, then I'm going to take this off using a little pair of tweezers. And this is still all really wet at this point. Now once I take this off, I get a really clean, perfect impression. So I was really impressed with how that came out. And then I was holding the die cut in my hand and thought, actually, I'm sure I can use this too. Um, so this is where I'm going to come back and use some of the pastes uh, that were left over from just a minute ago. And you can see them, some of them on my palette knife. And I also bring in a darker one. But in my crafting, if I can avoid waste, then I will. And I really like kind of the challenge as well. So this is where I didn't quite have enough to get a smooth blend. So I'm going to add in a little bit of the darker one that I had just a minute ago. And it just kind of used a different color. So I put it all over the whole thing and mix them all in. And this creates lots of different gorgeous shades of blue. And then this one is another die cut, coloured and ready to go. I would create this into a background. I could definitely even cut this into strips or pieces. Uh, lots of ideas kind of spring to mind. But anyway, I was getting a little bit off track with this <laughs> because the idea of this video was to use up the leftovers on my table rather than creating a whole lot more. But I am going to carry on with the video at this point. But just letting you know that there are so many different things that you can kind of uh, do. Even if you don't have stencils, you're able to use something else. Now I am going to fussy cut out this gorgeous lily. I have done this quite a bit. This one I had already colored. The other one was not colored in yet, but I decided that uh, in the effort of trying to use things up, I was going to use the one that was already colored. I fussy cut around the edges of that one. And then all I need to do for a few of these is stamp out some sentiments. I had that little banner that was already there. So I was determined to use that one up. I stamped a little happy birthday in some Versafine Onyx Black ink. And then for uh, a couple of them, I stamped another couple of little happy birthday sentiments. Then these are the three that I ended up creating with my little texture paste backgrounds. And I'm just going to really quickly pop these together into cards to show you how I finish these off. And again, these are just using all of those kind of leftover pieces on my table. So I love the blue glitter in this one here. So I'm going to add this. This has been cut down to be about four by five and a quarter inches. And I'm going to pop some foam, uh, kids fun foam on the back here. And that will give it a little bit of dimension and pop it down onto a four and a quarter by five and a half inch card base. Now I just want to mention that we have an awesome, amazing, supportive Facebook group that is called Come Crafting with Natasha and that is a place where you can post pictures and things of your final makes that were inspired by uh, the videos on my channel. And what I thought would be really fun is if you choose to uh, do a card or create a card using your leftovers, take a photo of your pile of leftovers, first of all, that you intend on using, and then show us what you turned them into and how you put them together. Uh, that would be fabulous if we could see that. I would really uh, enjoy seeing those photos. So if you have them to share, then I would love to see them. Come and join us over there at Come Crafting with Natasha, or you can just follow the link that is in the description box below this video. I will also have links to all of the products that I have used in today's video that are still available and I will put links to all of those uh, in the description box below this video too. Now just when I'm coming together with this one, this is the um, Hero Arts Layering Robin that I've popped there on his little stump with a uh, happy birthday stamp from the Word Fragments stamp set that is from Woodwear. And this one, I really like this. Very clean, very simple, but came together really nicely using up those leftovers. 
Now this is the point where I was going to use the lily and I was having trouble deciding which background to put it on. My heart speaks to put it on the yellow one, but I felt like that would be the easy option. And sometimes I want to challenge my brain. So using the blue with the bigger hole in the back, I was determined to make this one work. And it's really, really simple. It's not hard at all. But I think sometimes I just like to challenge myself and going with the yellow one was super easy. And I thought the little pink uh, and white lily worked perfectly fine on the blue as well as the yellow. So I'm going to pop this one together. I have cut down the blue one to be four by five and a quarter inches. I'm popping this one down nice and flat using some liquid glue. That's the Ranger Multimedium in the matte finish. And this one has gorgeous sparkle too. It did kind of end up transparent, although it's a little bit hard to show. Um, it is transparent, but we added color to it and glitter. So it's probably not as transparent as it could have been if we hadn't have added those extras to it. But I still really like the look and I still had a whole lot of fun creating. I am popping the lily down pretty flat and then with the sentiment here I'm going to pop that bit up on some foam tape. And this one is just going to sit along the bottom nicely. I really love the simplicity of both of these cards. They were really fun to create and it got up all of those leftovers used up off my desk which is something else that makes me really happy. And it makes for quicker card making as well. So here is the second card all finished, done and dusted. I hope you have enjoyed this video. This was a really fun one to make and really fun to just use those leftover bits and pieces that are on our craft spaces and tables. So those were the two cards that I created today. Thank you so much for joining me and all of the support that I am given by this community. I appreciate it so very, very much and I look forward to seeing you in the next video. Thanks, bye! Thank you.